Hello, my name is Paul C. Dwyer, Security GRC and Cybercrime Advisor. Today we're going to look at the various types of DDoS attacks. Firstly, we look at a basic attack methodology. Then we'll uh, revise some jargon, some basic jargon that we need to go over in order to explain how these attacks work. Then I'll look at some of the main uh, attack vectors or attack types from ICMP ping flood, UDP flood, smurf attack, SYN flood, get request, frag flood, and a, finally a DNS amplification attack. Okay, so a typical attack scenario uh, starts off with a botnet herder who will have a command and control server. This command and control server will be contacted via a number of proxy servers in order to disguise the identity of the botnet herder. Okay, typical the scenario is that there will be a website online uh, via the internet and have a good solid connection back to its users. But the command and control server will be able to c control the botnet or a network of zombie computers which are controlled by the botnet herder to issue various types of commands in order to uh, uh, instigate or execute a particular vector of attack. Okay, so now let's just revise some basic jargon. Okay, first of all the word protocol. You can think of a protocol as a language used by computers. Next, ICMP. ICMP is a, a type of language, if you like, used by computers in order to communicate usually around messages relating to errors, status, or low priority messages. The characteristics are of ICMP that it's easy to blast large volumes of traffic using ICMP. It's also easy to filter it, but there's no built-in flow control. TCP is the language of the computer uses in order to define ordered streams of data for things that are actually quite important. So it's used when mistakes are not acceptable, for example, for email or web browsing. UDP, on the other hand, is a language that's used by computers when reliability is not such an issue. For example, in the transmission of voice over IP, streaming media, video and so on, or even DNS queries. The characteristics of UDP include that you can also create large volumes easily. Um, there's no flow control and it's very easy uh, to be used in a DDoS attack. Okay, so now let's look at a, a basic ICMP ping flood attack. Here we have the typical scenario of a website online uh, with a connection through to its good users and we see we have the botnet herder via the proxy server uh, controlling uh, the botnet via its, its command and control server. Well, what they will do is they will issue out what's known as a ping or an ICMP packet. Uh, these ICMP packets will target the uh, website and uh, this can be done, it's been done to a great extent to, in the likes of the, the cyber war with Estonia and Georgia and so on. There's also tools to automate this. But this will create large amounts of traffic uh, hitting the site in which the, 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 the site has to actually send back um, a response to that which will keep the site very, very busy and effectively be able to block the site from access to the good users. Okay, next let's look at a UDP flood. A UDP flood um, uh, uses a UDP protocol, um, and the way that works is that it will uh, look for ports, and ports you can think of are like doorways on your computer, and there's various types of doorways, and the reason we use firewalls are that the firewalls uh, protect those various doorways. When a UDP packet is sent out, uh, your computer then has to look for what program may be on your computer looking for that particular um, UDP port or UDP doorway. Um, it has to send back what's known as an ICM destination reachable packet as a response so that all takes time that takes processing power uh, of the machine and resources and eventually will bog the machine down and make the machine unavailable to good users Okay, next we have a, an old one, but uh, it's known as a smurf attack. Smurf attack is uh, slightly different in so far as the echo request is sent to um, a router on the network, and that is uh, will forward uh, the broadcast off to uh, the broadcast network. Now, what they'll do is they'll actually forge the reply address to be the address of your website. So in other words, when the, uh, uh, w when the response comes back, all the responses or the echo reply will actually be sent uh, to your website website uh, taking your website offline. Okay, next we have what's known as a SYN flood attack. Um, initially, when computers um, uh, communicate with each other, for example, when you hit a website, um, the two computers have to handshake. This is known as a SYN ACK, where a SYN packet is sent um, across uh, to, to the website and what we'll receive back is what's known as an ACK packet, uh, or short for acknowledgement. Um, SYN is short for synchronization. Um, the next part of that is actually a pause. So during a SYN flood attack, a vast number of SYN uh, uh, packets will be sent to a website, um, leaving that website to have to respond with a large number of ACK uh, or acknowledgement packets, and also those pauses that we we'll also put in there as well, which overwhelms the website and makes it unavailable to the uh, uh, legitimate users. 
The next type of attack we look at, look at is known as a GET request. Um, a GET request is that when you actually uh, visit a website, um, a GET request uh, is, is used to bring down the uh, web the web page and so on and bring it back. Um, using a GET request uh, attack vector, a vast number of these GET requests will be sent, for example, targeting maybe one particular file on your website, for example, a large graphic file or large document or so on like that. That simply overwhelms the website and makes the website unavailable to good users. The next type is known as a frag float or a teardrop attack. This type of attack is when um, fragmented packets, there's, there's two parts of this attack if you like. The first part is where it tries to use a vast number of volume uh, of packets in order to overwhelm the various uh, network topology from firewalls, the servers, the routers and so on. Um, but when packets are sent across networks, they're generally broken down into fragmented packets and the first packet or, or the, the header packet that is sent out will have all the information on how to reassemble them. But in a frag packet attack or a frag float, uh, what they'll do is they won't send out that, that those packets that have the information on how to reassemble them, which will cause massive confusion to the, the website, overwhelm the operating systems and, and the, the various parts uh, of communication and uh, technology that's used and make the website unavailable. The final type of attack that we look at today is what's known as a DNS amplification attack. And this is a, a totally different type of vector. In fact, that you don't even use to, you don't even have to use botnets involved in this. This is based on the premise that there is a number of a large number of misconfigured DNS servers. This is a very very powerful attack uh, that can be used. And a miscreant can send a command, a, sp a specific query type command, to a DNS server, and the response, they can send hundreds of thousands of these queries to them, and the responses need to be sent to a particular um, uh, address. And of course, that address will be uh, your website. Uh, so all of those hundreds of thousands of replies from these DNS servers all over the world would start bombarding your website and making your website unavailable for everybody. These attacks have been used to even take countries offline. They can produce massive amounts of volume of traffic very quickly um, in order to be able to take down even, even the largest infrastructures. Okay, I hope you found this uh, video both useful and informative, and uh, by all means, please keep in contact via the uh, blog, LinkedIn, or Twitter, um, and uh, if you'd like any more information, please don't hesitate to visit paulcedwire.com. Thank you.